So, boy howdy, this week's been a proper pant dampening thriller when it comes to tech launches. For one, Razer spanked out possibly the most dazzling mouse mat of all time. This here Firefly V2 Pro, which boasts customizable edge-to-edge -edge LED backlighting. The kind of excess I'd usually equate to sticking tits on a donkey, but different strokes I guess. And Motorola also lifted the veil on its latest Megabucks flagship phone, the Edge 50 Ultra which I had a proper grope of in Morocco. Is that seven inches of serious wood in your pocket? Oh, it is. How, uh, how lovely. And if you absolutely gush at a bit of hot moto action, well, definitely go check out the shorts I did on the Moto Edge 50 Ultra. And I can't be asked to repeat myself here. But the most intriguing news of this week is possibly that Brew Bastards Heineken have gone and done a phone of sorts which appears to be an acceptable excuse for me to do this show semi-hammered. Not that I need one, obviously. Cheers! Techspert Weekly! Now, HMD Global is perhaps best known for churning out a lot of Nokia phones these past few years, but this week it announced an all-new handset collaboration with Heineken and Bodega. As a functioning alcoholic, I'm all too aware of what Heineken is, and as a super hip, cool, fashionable, down with the kids kind of guy, I absolutely did not have to Google Bodega to find out what that was. And apparently, it's some kind of New York corner shop. Great place to pick up cheap booze, they reckon, so that's definitely been stored away for my next visit. Anyways, this miniature blower is known as the Boren Phone, and it's a transparent flip style feature phone that's effectively just a see through Nokia 2660. The idea behind the Boren phone is that, like other feature phones, it's not particularly functional. You can make calls, send and receive text messages, the usual jazz, and if you're absolutely bored shitless, you can of course play a quick round of Snake. And of course you can enjoy a lovely bit of FM radio, if you don't mind your song being interrupted halfway through by what sounds like an entire hive of pissed off bees angrily attacking the insides of your ears. And there's even a 0.3 megapixel camera if you want to shoot a photo of your kids to go on a postage stamp. The Boren phone is being billed as a social phone because it's so rubbish that you'll spend less time gawping at it and presumably more time getting absolutely shitted on Heineken beer, possibly bought from a bodega. But frankly, they shouldn't worry. Like all blokes, I'm an excellent multitasker, happily down in many pints of the golden nectar while simultaneously browsing Weifu smut on my blower. piss flaps. The Boren phone boasts a full week of battery standby, so that's approximately 5.5 thousand times that you can pull it out of your pocket, remember that it doesn't do the waifu porn, and then regrettably slip it back into your pants. And this blower was unveiled at Milan Design Week yesterday, which you should absolutely follow on Instagram if you really like photos of empty chairs. Lots and lots of empty chairs, sometimes in places you wouldn't expect chairs, and also pics of people staring at things and wondering what the f they're actually supposed to be. And that right there is the Boren phone, possibly the most exciting tech launch of the week, if you don't count Motorola, of course, and Razer's flashy f***ing mouse mat. I mean, I'm all for putting LEDs in random sh you know, now that I'm getting old, it helps my withered, decrepit eyes to actually work out where things are. Wanna guess how much it costs, though? 100 quid. <laughs> anyway, now it's time for the part of the show that couldn't be described as boring or a fawn. Just kind of sh**. It's fewer comments. Fewer comments. You're gonna need a bit of a gulp of this before we begin. <coughs> That's better. Uh, right, let's commence and uh, let's kick off this week with Baz Anime, who says, Uncle Spurt, were you an X-Men fan as a little sprog? If yes, have you jumped on X-Men 97 on Disney Plus? It's a fine blast from the past. Now, I've got to admit, I never really got into any of the Marvel stuff as a kid, either the comics or the, uh, the old cartoons and stuff. I was aware of them. That's about as far as it went. I remember seeing, I think it was Wolverine on some kid's lunchbox. Me and my mates were definitely a lot more into the Turtles, which is why I was mega excited to see that pop up again on Paramount+. Plus. It's like a full-on nostalgia fest for kids' cartoons at the moment. And yeah, there's just far too many classic bangers on Disney Plus that I used to love back in the day, Chip and Dale and all that kind of stuff. I could literally spend months just reliving my childhood, apart from the bits where Uncle Kevin took me down to his basement and told me to massage his... Well, I won't go into all that now anyway. There's an upcoming Netflix documentary if you want to know more. 
Uh, John Paul Graham says, you've had a go at Middlesbrough two weeks in a row now. Why don't you make a list of famous people from Middlesbrough and compare them for famous people from Sunderland? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, mate. You know me. I'm just always going for that low hanging fruit. So famous borough people, you've obviously got Chris Rea himself, Mr. Driving on the Road to Hell to Christmas. The Sunderland equivalent, I guess, would be uh, Mr. Brian Ferry off of the Roxy Musics. What's her name? Virginia Plain. Whoop. But then on the comedy front, uh, Borough comes back strong, of course, with Mr. Bob Mortimer. Not really sure we've got anyone funnier than that from Sunderland. Okay, so I just googled uh, Sunderland comedian, and it's literally three old white guys who all died years ago, and someone who looks like a Victorian Pee Wee Herman who apparently performed during the First World War. Okay, I grow weary of this contest. Um, let's just call it a draw. Nolo44 says, Smoggy Borough, not that desolate, got loads of fly tipping points of view. I'm sorry, JPG, that was absolutely him, not me, mate. Matthew Long says, I'm more concerned for Veronica, the beautiful photography model who used to appear in your reviews. Did you sober up for 10 minutes and now she's in pieces under the decking? The same fate that befalls all the women in my life. No, she's absolutely fine. Just one minute, I'll prove it. Here she is. Say hello, Veronica. As you can see, my daughter has reclaimed her. She's gone through a bit of a styling phase at the moment. For once, I'm actually relieved that my head's shinier than a glacier mint. Next up, other Singh Puri says, Watch this one with my wife from the sunny state of Goa in Western India, drinking coconut rum. Oh, God. Sorry, I can't even think about coconut rum without bringing up a bit of breakfast. I don't know if I ever told you guys the story of the stupidest drinking thing what I ever did, possibly. So I was back at uni, and uh, yes, I did actually go to uni. This isn't a made-up story. And we had this stupid college day uh, that we had to do, which involved uh, doing eight drinks before eight in the morning, eight before eight. Now you could choose eight beers, but obviously drinking eight beers before eight in the morning, that's quite a commitment uh, and we're quite lazy. So we thought we'd get up closer to sort of seven o'clock and just do eight double shots, which was also an acceptable uh, option. So me and the guy I was sharing a room with, we went down to Safeways, I think it was, one of those quality supermarket establishments and found the cheapest bottle of spirits that we could buy. I think it was about £3.50, something like that. There's a bottle of their own brand coconut rum, which was sat there in like a discount bin because everyone else was far too smart to even touch the thing. So we set our alarms, got up at like seven o'clock, trudged down to the sort of rivery bit uh, where everyone was getting absolutely wankered. And then, yeah, did our 16 shots. So we then skipped merrily slash crawled back to college for breakfast. Uh, I remember sitting down with my food and then immediately realizing that I needed pretty urgently to go to the lavvy. Went to the nearest one, locked myself in the cubicle, and then at this point you think, oh, my stomach's not feeling so good, I'm probably going to chuck up. What do you do? You kneel in front of the toilet. Not this, lads. No, I decided I would sit on the toilet instead and just vomit onto the floor. Just kind of made sense at the time. I then must have passed out because I woke up, I think it was about three hours later, just slumped against the wall. The sound of voices <laughs> outside. I think some people were slightly concerned. I waited for them to bugger off and I just kind of slunk out of there. Vomit still all over the floor. My shoes, my pants, pretty much everything. And then I went to bed and slept through the rest of college day. And that was the last time I did 16 shots of anything before my pop tarts. Enjoy Goa though, mate. Hope you and the missus having a crack in time. Briefly visited that on my trip of India. I just remember being full of hippies, so I was really, really, really sick of Bob Marley after about two days. Now on the subject of effing massive foldable phones, which was the topic of last week's discussion, Carlito Pakash says, I've got the Fold 5 and I'm not looking for an incremental upgrade, so I don't care about the Fold 6 rumours. Just watch this for the smart assery was not disappointed. Oh, well, you know, just straight up assery. It's what I do best. Ultra Vergator 1995 says, still not as flexible as mine. Lucky. Michael Courtney says, have to admit I'm done with flexible blowers. I bought an Oppo Find N2 Flip last June and I woke up one morning to turn my alarm off just a couple of months ago. And despite the phone sitting on my bedside cabinet all night, I had a crack down the middle and it's unresponsive. Bloody hell. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you've got a poltergeist or something, or maybe were you like sleepwalking with it and you dropped it on the kitchen floor or something? I've never heard of any sort of flippy foldable type phone just cracking in the middle of the night. That's quite a uh, quite an outer limit style mystery there, mate. If anyone else has any uh, any tales of war, their, their phone's just magically breaking in the middle of the night, then definitely let us know. 
Daniel Zoom says, I have the Fold 3, don't think I have a reason to upgrade yet. And likewise, Aqualora says, I love my Fold 5. I can't see me trading it in unless the Fold 6 comes with an S Pen integrated that works on both screens and it has better cameras. Oh, it does absolutely seem like an incremental upgrade once again, if the rumors and leaks are true. I guess that's probably why they're thinking of doing an Ultra version, which makes sense. At least you've got an alternative option. I mean, people with existing Folds actually have a reason to upgrade then. Uh, Vladimir Zunik says, I can't wait for the new OnePlus Open 2. And likewise, Denny Keller says, OnePlus Open 2, and hopefully it comes with wireless charging this time around. Yeah, absolutely. If there's one foldable that I am excited about this year, it's a potential OnePlus Open 2. Definitely very much enjoyed that first one, so hopefully they can continue the trend there. Danny continues, uh, just on your health, Chris, to be fair, you do look like you were in train spotting just without the Glaswegian accent. Well, to be fair, this past week I have actually genuinely been ill, so it's not just a booze and bacon diet making me look like a baddie from Blade. And proper dodgy guts for a good few days, only just about recovering now, but seriously, this past week my arse has resembled a Las Vegas fountain. We're talking a proper full on 120 metre projection here. So several days in a row, I had to not only give up caffeine, but also had to give up alcohol. It was, uh, it, it was not pleasant. Anyway, all good now. I no longer have to sleep in the shower or anything. William Crowder says, I'm not sure what the point is of seven years of software updates. I've got an S22 Plus, which gets four years of updates, but there's already a functionality on the S24 Plus, which I'm not going to get. So how much are S24 Plus users going to be missing out on by the launch of the S31 Plus? Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, obviously hardware limitations means that older phones don't always get all of the new updates. Uh, so for instance, I think uh, some of the AI shenanigans was left out of the S22 series, although you get most of that stuff. But at the very least, these many, many years of support means that older phones are still kept secure. So you don't really have to ditch them until like the performance is too cack or you finally drop it in the pub urinal while trying to drunkenly text your uncle Kevin about that evening's basement meetup. Now, running out of time, so better make these the last couple of comments. Uh, Bojo says, are you going to do a video for the Xiaomi SU7, the car? I certainly bloody will if they send me one. Bry6314 says, I was in a charity shop and I found an iPhone 4S. It's half the size of my Oppo Find X5 Pro. I used to have an iPhone 6 Plus and remember when articles stated, is this the end of large smartphones? Like 5.5 inches was the ultimate size and you couldn't go any bigger. How wrong they were. Yes, and I was one of those clueless tech journalists who poo-pooed the 5.5 to 6-inch brigade, saying that, yes, this is getting stupid. Now let's just stop. Uh, back in the good old days when I actually wasn't completely jaded, still had some semblance of f**ks to give. And Grebo and Gasport says, Loving how many of your phone camera reviews are in my neighbouring town of Forkston. Before long, you'll earn the infamous title of a DFL, down from Londoner, who've already infiltrated my hometown a few miles along the coast. I guess technically I'm down from a lot further than London, but I, I really love spending as much time as possible at the coast. I grew up very close to the coast up in the, uh, the northeast there, and yeah, like my parents, like true northerners, love to hit the beach even when it was cold enough to freeze the tits off a penguin. I'd be sat there in my big winter jacket and my hat, desperately trying to build a sandcastle despite the fact that my wee plastic spade couldn't actually cut through the ice covering the sand. Good times. But anyway, this is like probably turning into a reminiscent fest. Reminiscent, is that a word? I don't think it is. Whatever it is, it needs to stop. So as always, a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Great fun reading through all those. Please do uh, write stuff down below. It can be about absolutely anything you like. And uh, we'll get through as many of those as possible next week. That's what we'll do. And speaking of next week. Next week, next week. What the f*** is next week? All right, so next week, I'm actually off to sunny Shenzhen in uh, China. I think I pronounced that right. A lovely 14-hour trip uh, going out there to spend some time with uh, my great mates at Huawei. Can't see any more than that right now because as per the embargo, if I do, they can rip out my tongue and stuff it so far inside of me that I can actually lick my own kidneys. Well, anyway, I don't get back until Sunday, but the plan is to do this show out there in Shenzhen, get it live on Friday, as usual. Admittedly, this is a plan that may well crumble like a bridge made of puff pastry. Worst case scenario, scenario, worst case scenario, Mish Money Penny. Uh, worst case is that uh, the, the show goes out in two weeks time rather than uh, next week, in which case I massively apologize. Can probably blame it on the old Chinese rice wine. 
Uh, but anyway, yes, that's next week. We've still got lots of videos going live next week while I'm away. I've been stacking them up because I've had so much bloody tech to review. Uh, one of the videos is the Pixelate Pro review, which I finally got around to, uh, to shooting this week. Huzzah. Uh, so yeah, so, so pork subscribe, ding that notifications bell for, uh, for more of this bold twat blathering. Bold twat blathering, that's what I should have called this show really. Anyway, have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend everyone and hopefully see you next week, maybe in two. Love you!